Oh, welcome back. I'm glad you could join me today. And today I have a special treat for you. I have a close personal friend that's going to paint for you today, and he comes out of Muncie, Indiana. I'd like to introduce you to Dana Jester. And Dana travels all over the country teaching for us, and I think you'll find him a fantastic painter. So, Dana, thanks for being here. I'm going to turn it over to you, and I'll see thanks you at the end of the Bob. show. Okay. Today, what I've done, I've got the canvas prepared ahead of time. I've got a coat of magic white up here on the top, and I've used the magic black on the bottom, the base only magic black down here. And the colors we'll be using today, you'll be seeing soon across your screen here. And what I'm going to use first is phthalo blue, and we're going to paint in a little sky across here. We'll just use this X pattern across, just to, across the top, just like so. And we'll gradually blend this in using our magic white, since it makes a nice base coat. And we'll let it gradually lighten up as we work our way down to where maybe the horizon line is going to be on this painting. Just like so. Okay, we'll go ahead and clean our large brush here. And I think maybe we better, on this painting here, we'll use the fan brush and we'll load it up with some titanium white. Load it fairly heavy. That way you'll get the brush to work right for you with these clouds. We we'll use the brush in a circular motion like this. You don't have to put the same amount of clouds in your painting as what I'll put in mine. You can always design your own, use your own imagination. Just put a few floating little clouds in here, something like that. You'll go ahead and clean your brush. And we'll go back over these clouds with a large brush, kind of soften them down, set them into the sky a little bit. Look at that. Just go back and forth on them, something like that. And I think maybe what we'll do next is take we're going to work with equal parts of alizarin crimson and phthalo green. This should make a uh, black, but in order to test this color, we need to mix a little bit of it in with some of your titanium white. Make sure you get this thoroughly mixed. If not, you'll be in trouble. Okay, take a little bit of your titanium white you end up with a black, nice dark gray. So we're going to go ahead and use this with some more titanium white. We'll use this for the base coat of your mountains. I'll we'll put some mountains in this painting today. I think the majority of people like mountains. OK, let's work with a little bit darker value, especially if you haven't painted too many mountain scenes. If you get a real dark base coat, it'll be a lot easier for you. OK, let's go up to the canvas and put as a peek in, just like so. Just drag this paint down. Just scrape it right on into the canvas. You can make as many peaks as you desire, just whatever you like. It's best to avoid getting a straight edge down here at the base of your mountain. We just want to get this scraped in for now. The magic white will work for you in a few minutes. Just like that. Okay, go ahead and clean your knife off. Make sure you got all the excess paint off that mountain, but what we're going to do is start working with, with some highlight color. We're just going to use titanium white, roll it up on your knife like that, and get a nice fine roll and go up to the right hand side of your mountain and just let this glide down right off a knife. We'll do it again here. Just like so. Just let it glide and break. If not, this mountain will not set back for you. And we'll start here on this peak again. The lights suggested from the right hand side of your painting. Just like that. Maybe run this ridge right on a rover. This is how you develop several different ridges in a mountain. Just let her flow off your knife. Just like that. 
Okay, now what we're gonna work with next will be some titanium white and just a small amount of your phthalo blue because that stuff, I'll tell you, is really strong. It really will overpower that white real quick. Just want a nice, soft, real light blue. And we'll use it just the same as we did your white, only we're gonna put it on the left-hand side of your peaks for the shadow. Just fill in your little dark areas there. Go back and fill in all the left-hand sides here. This is where you develop your own mountain. Wherever you see a little ravine, that's where you need to put your shadowed area in. Just like so. Okay. Now let's take a large brush and soften this base's this mountain down quite a bit. You can pull this paint down and follow the, usually it's best to follow the contour of the mountain. It'll help the lay of the mountain real well. You just pull straight up and down, the mountain looks like it's just standing up on the canvas. You don't want that to happen. You want that to drag right on out. But if you didn't have that magic quiet underneath here, it sure would be a problem. And see how nice and misty and hazy it is at the base of that mountain? That's what you're looking for. Now you can go up here and pull just a little bit of this white down. Nice and easy. Now, at this time, we'll go ahead and work with the knife again, and we'll drag just a little more highlights down. Maybe, maybe we want this to come down just a little further in just a few areas. That'll really help set it back just a little bit more also. I don't get too carried away. Where you have light, you'll need some shadows, so keep that in mind also. Okay, let's go with our knife, and we'll put in Maybe a little bit more shadow area right in here. Just like that. Okay, now we can soften that down using a large brush again. And see how much more distance you're creating when you put just a little more white down there, just like that. Just like so. Okay, let's work with the fan brush next. What we're gonna wanna do is go with the fan brush and pick up quite a bit of your, your dark mix that we mixed up earlier. And we're gonna use this to put in a few fir trees back here off into the distance. So we'll go up here and start, just use your fan brush, just use the chiseled edge of it. Just tap down and pull, pull these trees down. And it's also a real nice idea if you can vary the height in them trees. You don't wanna have them all the same size. Looks a little more realistic if you can do that. Don't forget to put quite a bit of paint on your brush, especially when you're first starting out along this edge. And then as you work toward the center of your painting, let's just let the paint flow off the brush and use the magic white to lighten this up in value. That'll set it off even a little bit more off into the distance. Just like so. See how those are starting to fade off into the distance? Look at that. That's just right. Right on over to nothing. Okay, let's go ahead and clean that fan brush out. Maybe we'll work with an inch brush next. I think maybe take the inch brush and we'll just tap and soften this down a little bit. This will give the illusion of more fog or mist here at the base of these trees. That'll set them, help set them back into the painting. Maybe give it just a little more depth as you work across the canvas. Also, it don't hurt at this time to maybe pull in and follow the contour of the land here at the base of your trees. We'll go back to our fan brush. And what we're gonna do with the fan brush again is just load it up real heavy with your dark mix. And we'll put in a few more distinctive fir trees, a little larger right here. Just use the corner of your brush and just let them fir trees fall right out of the brush. Just like that. Just tap it right on down. Just like so. That was so fun, let's do another one. He can't stay there all by himself. Just tap him right in there. Look at that thing grow. 
You can pull her right on down to the land. You don't want him floating. Getting carried away, I gotta put one more. Maybe he's leaning just a little bit. It's just a baby tree here. Okay, let's go ahead and clean our fan brush. Maybe we'll get some land for those fir trees to set on. And we'll go back with our inch brush and we'll just tap down just a little bit to create a little more distance in the painting. Something like that. Now let's go back with the old fan brush. A little bit of black, not much. We just want to tap and press and lift to create just a little land underneath here. Just like that. Then we'll go back and maybe soften this up just a little bit more with the one inch brush. Even pull some of this down. Kind of taper that land off like it's a rolling hill. Got to have a little few rolling hills around this mountain. You don't want to be lonely there. Okay, let's go ahead and go back with our inch brush and just soften this down just a little bit just by tapping down. That way you'll have a few dark areas in there. Soften it up, just like that. Better clean that inch brush out here. And I think maybe it would be a good time to take the fan brush out again. And let's put in a few trunk lines with some of this dark mix. And again, on this, if your paint's very thick, you may want to add just a little thinner for the paint to flow off your brush for these trees. These trees will be nice and tall. Maybe we'll take it all the way off the top of the canvas here. Just come down just like that. Just like that. Don't forget, take plenty of paint on your brush and put these trees in. Okay, let's try that again. That was so much fun, we better try it again. Let's go ahead and put in another one right in here. Just like that. Just let her come on down into your foreground here. You don't want to let it stand there in midair. We'll go maybe one more time or a couple more times. You never know, just depending on the mood of the brush. Just like so. Just remember to put plenty of paint on your brush when you're doing this and pull it down. Okay, I, I think there's a little old, maybe this next tree's a little lazy and I think he, Looks like he might be leaning over just a little bit. Look at that. Yeah, he's lazy for sure. Plenty of paint. Just like that. Remember to take him down into the foreground. And while we got the brush loaded, let's pick up a little thinner on that brush and go with this dark mix. Make sure it's a little on the thin side. And we can always tap in just a few little pines on this side. Maybe there's a, another fir tree growing over here on this side. Just like that. Okay, now before we get too carried away on tapping the old pines on, on the other trees, let's take a liner brush and some thin oil, or your thinner, and put on a few branches on these. Just drag them right off there. Load your brush up and make sure that paint's good and thin or it won't flow for you. Set some thinner on that brush. And drag them right on out like so. Just like that. Maybe these other trees need a few uh, branches on them. Just like that. Remember, make sure that paint's good and thin. It won't flow off for you. You can also get a little carried away putting too many branches on these trees, but you gotta have enough to make it a little realistic there. And it helps if your arm or your hand can get real nervous to make those branches kind of wiggly there, like Mother Nature creates them. Something like that. Maybe another one down in there. I have a friend every now and then. 
or if you take one clear off the side of the canvas. Okay, let's go back to the fan brush. Make sure your paint's thin down a little bit. You can use a little bit of your thinner. Use this dark value just to tap in, just tap. I'm really just using the corner of my brush now. Just tap in a little bit of pines here. Just like that. Maybe we'll go over here on the other side. Do these while we're at it. Just like so. Don't get too carried away. You'll cover up everything there. More paint here. Just let them fall off the brush. Just that simple. There. Let's take and put a few down here just a little lower. Real close to the foreground here. That foliage. Okay, let's clean our brush off. And let's work with the one inch brush. And we'll, what we're gonna do, we'll need to add just a little more of your black mix to your base coat. And maybe just a tad more alizarin to it. We wanna work from our darks, work up to our lights here. So, we get something like that, a real deep color. Let's put it on down here in the foreground. Let's use the one inch brush and just use a little tap, even just a little circular motion on that. This is just a base coat, just to give you a coat. You don't want to cover or kill all your darks. You've got to have those darks to create just a little more depth, a little more in interest in the painting there. But go ahead and go all the way across your canvas. And we'll do all those little bushes and foliages in the front there. These may even turn up to be little flowering bushes, just like that. And at home, you can create your own paintings or you can get your own idea and put it on canvas, but this just give you some guideline or to show you how, how the brushes work, just like that. Remember to save some of your dark. You don't want to kill all that dark. Okay. All right, next I think we're gonna need to mix up just a little bit of lighter value. And we'll go with the same mix and just add just a little titanium white to it. And a little alizarin. I want this to end up to a lavender or a mauve color. And we'll be working with that. Okay, let's take a one inch brush and just dip it into your magic white a little bit and then go through this color and pick it up. Yeah, just something like that. And we'll go up here and we'll just tap on this canvas just up just a little bit. And again, it's really important on this not to kill all your darks. Save some of your darks. Just go across the base here. And at this time, you can press and lift, but we don't want to kill all your darks. We're going over the top of this with a lighter value than what I've got here. That'll really make them stand out. Just press and lift. These might be fire weeds or something like that. You never can tell here. But remember, I'm saving some of that dark. I'm doing that for a purpose. When you look at this at, with the finished product, if you if you have some of dark, your darks left, you'll create just a little more interest and it'll look a little deeper for you. Just like that. At home, you might want to take a little time and make individual ones. It's really whatever you desire. Go ahead and get the entire 
base this canvas with this color value here. We'll go ahead and lighten it up in just a minute. Got to have the darks before you work to your lights. Keep that in mind, it'll help you with your paintings. Just like so. Okay, let's use that same mixture. Dip her brush into the Magic White. And I'll lighten this up a little bit, but we also may want to go just a little pinker. Let's add just a little more alizarin to this. So you can really see the color change when you go up to the canvas. Just press and lift again. We don't want this over the entire canvas now, or over each and every individual bush either. We just want to hit a few places here. See how that brings them out just a little bit more? Just like that. Just brings them out just a little bit more there. We can also add just a little more magic white to this. And a little more lizard to even make it stand out just a little bit more. Just like that. Just press and lift. Don't have to do each and every one because we're going one more time with this. Just a little bit lighter. Let's catch this guy right here. Look at that. Let's save some of the darks. A L little more magic white. A little more lizard. And them right in there. Look at these things grow. Now let's go just a little bit lighter on a few of these, like maybe the light's hitting them really strong. More lizard and more magic white. Just tap just a few places on them. I won't get too carried away. See how that makes them stand out just a little bit more. They're not all in the light though, so you don't want them all, all real light. But notice I'm still saving some of my darks. You gotta keep that in mind. Don't wanna kill all your darks. Just like so. Get a couple right up here. Now, I think maybe we'll go ahead and clean her brush out. And we'll go in the, with a liner brush. And if you've got magic black, you can use just old straight magic black on this. We'll just put a few twigs or some dead branches down here at the base of the painting. Just wiggle them right in like that. And wiggle them right in. Let's let them flow right off the brush. They're just growing in the wild. Maybe start right in there and put another one. Let's look at that. Flow right off the brush. Magic white is really nice. Okay. Let me take this one up just a little bit further. And something like that. And one more here. Just like so. Make sure you got the base that's faded into the painting good enough to where they look like they're at least attached to the ground.
Make some real squiggly branches on some of these here. Just like so. Then you can go back and go over the ones here on the far right hand side and use some magic white and just barely go over them just to highlight them just a little bit. Just like so. And I think maybe we'll go ahead and sign our name. J E S T E R. Didn't I tell you this young man was fantastic? Dana, we certainly thank you for being with us today. We look forward to seeing him again. From all of us here, happy painting. God bless.